There we go. There we go. Except we can't actually Except hear it, so. <laughs> but they can hear us? Then they can hear us, yeah. Now they know. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Right. Uh, we're going. Go ahead, James. Okay. Uh, today is <laughs> February 11th, theoretically. We may look like we're wearing the exact same clothes we were on the 4th. Uh, 2014, and you are listening or watching I Think You Think. Um, I'm James, other host star. Justin. And? Sequoia. Uh, we have no credentials worth noting. Uh, we're a weekly topical podcast that focuses on what we think and hopefully what you think. Um, feel free to email us. We have like a... Probably half a billion different ways to contact us. <laughs> the easiest way to find them all is at ithinkyouthink.com. Um, half a billion really is an, an overestimation. I don't really understand numbers. so Fair enough. Uh, but our topic this week is going to be CES, the Consumer Electronics Show 2014. Um, which, which wrapped up earlier. I mean, it was it was back in January. It was. It yeah, was. So, But uh, we talked about it last year, you we and did. I. Um, Pre-Sequoia, so P.S., no, it's before Sequoia. BS. It was BS. That's right. That's, Sorry. That's wow. a joke. I like yes. that joke. That's a good joke. <laughs> so, yes, BS. It was BS. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so if you don't know what the Consumer Expo, uh, the Consumer, Consumer Expo. Consumer Electronics Show. Thank you. Sorry. The Consumer Electronics <laughs> Show. No annoyance there at all. <laughs> Calm down, James. Calm the fuck down. I am calm. <laughs> so what with the f bomb? <laughs> hey, this, <laughs> my calm this is an explicit show. <laughs> if you didn't know that this was an explicit show, you didn't read your iTunes thing. We're on iTunes. We are. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Check it out. Anyway, the Consumer <laughs> Electronics Show 2014. Uh, lots of great electronics things. Maybe one day we'll actually go there. Maybe we'll podcast from there. Maybe we'll set up a booth or something and talk some kind of you know special USB that doesn't actually do anything. Big dreams. Big dreams. I think you think. Anyway, uh, okay. so <laughs> the Consumer, the right consumer Electronics Show of 2014, we have lots of stuff that we're going to talk about, things that we loved, things that we hated, things that made us cry. <laughs> I don't know about cry. any of that stuff. There's and stuff I liked. He's still going with the creepy voices, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know what creepy voices you're talking about. It's probably because that's like his fourth or fifth coffee. That's true. And I still have a headache. It just won't go away. I don't even know what I'm looking for now. Okay, <laughs> go on. Consumer Electronics Show. Yes. Yes. I uh, I don't have any any like things to read off of my computer. So okay, let's um, start with James. Yeah. You know. I, oh I was, wait, what's going on in our lives? <laughs> in the last half. Of, last hour, nothing has happened. Yeah, we kind of hung out here. Yeah, for a while it was great. And it was quiet for a little while. It, it always is quiet right when the show is over. Well, just kind of you two grab your phone. It's I grab my well, phone. Well, it's because we just give everything to the podcast, and we just yeah, need no. to recharge. It was it was actually a pretty it was a pretty intense one last week. It was. It may have seen. been a stabbing immediately after we went off the air. You wouldn't know. I'm not getting up during this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen it or listened to it, go check it out. Yep. Or you could watch it and not listen to it. I don't know why you do that, but you could do that. They want to see your beard. I actually think a lot of people don't know that we are also a video podcast. So if you don't know that already, we are. Because like I know a few of my friends have listened, and they're like, "You're on video too." Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Check us out. we are on video. Yep. You can see our beautiful shiny faces. In 720p most of the time. I don't have to pee. Yeah. Bathroom's over there. It's oh, all the coffee. <laughs> okay. Moving on. So so we've already burned through the first 20 25 minutes. <laughs> Six minutes. I, I Six minutes. Was, like, I feel like that's a like gross exaggeration. So. Okay. Um. So the first thing, then my list isn't like in order of anything really. Uh, the first one that really popped up to me though, on um, one of the places I want is the three doodler number three doodler. You can basically draw in three D. Sounds odd. But basically, it like heats up plastic that cools really quickly. So you can make like 3D okay. art kind of with this pen. Look it up. There's some YouTube videos that you can link to. Um, it was a Kickstarter project, and it just seems neat. You know, it's nothing that's going to change the world, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's going to be really interesting. It seems like a fun toy, yeah, um, basically, and an interesting concept. Well, and actually, when you were 
watching it earlier, I saw the part where the guy like made like a spring. So I mean, it could potentially have like more uses as it like gets better. And they, there are probably some bugs still to work out and everything, but it was really cool the stuff that they were doing with it. Like I was sort of blown away. We probably melt the bugs. It's really hot plastic. Okay. The Moving next on. one is actually more top of my list of all the things that I've read about <laughs> at uh, CES is the steam machine. Again, Valve finally came out and said, yes, we've been kind of quiet, but it's actually happening. Yeah, and by kind of quiet, they mean they talked about it last, they sort of talked about it last CES. Yeah, they had the Valve like machine, and, and then and Steam and talked about their thing. But yeah, go ahead. Um, so that is kind of officially full speed ahead again. Um, I'm not sure from what I read if they gave any official release date yet. They're still kind of testing it in a bunch of homes. But the price points, they said anywhere from 500 to, wait for it, yeah, $6,000. 6, so here's what it is. Here's Because I did a little bit of research into this because I knew you were excited about it. I've started playing a lot more Steam games. Um, uh, not in, in any kind of like preemption of this. Totally but waiting for it. Yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> but ba basically, the Steam operating system is out there. It exists. You can get it at any time. You can get it and, and mess around with it and try to get it to work. They've got a controller. I hate the way it looks, but I've never actually touched one or used one, so it might be amazing. Um, but it, so the idea is that anybody, any company out there that wants to build a little computer that is your this the Steam console, machine. the Steam machine, and then upload the operating system onto it, they can, and that's why they have this very large price point because you could start with a base and model five hundred dollars that can run all of the games on Steam. Are they going to? Is it going to run at the highest resolution? Are you going to have you know? 120 frames per second type stuff, you know, and and stream, you know, or whatever that you end up being able to do with it. Probably not, but, and so that's why there's this real vast price difference from 500 up to a six grand. Well, anyone who's watched or listened to the podcast knows that I'm excited about this thing coming out, so any more information on it is always making me happy. Yeah, so. yeah. So if it comes out next week at 500 bucks, you buy that instead of the one, right? Possibly. I, I wouldn't buy it right off the bat, especially such a new thing. I, I would wait. You know, you got to wait until it gets actually tested by people in the real world because that's when you really kind of learn. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I would I would hold off. I definitely wouldn't buy a one if it was in the you, you had said that, too, when the one, and I bought a one. Did I tell you what happened? No. My no. Kinect stopped working on the one. Oh, yeah, yeah, you did, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? It, it, stopped, go it now, right? stopped working, and um, it, Microsoft's good. I mean, the, it's the thing's still under warranty and everything, so it's, they're sending me a new Kinect to swap out. But, you know, it's weird without having voice controls for Netflix and stuff. You have to find the freaking controller. It's just weird. Like, Hashtag first world problem? Yeah, I know, right? Exactly. Hashtag. No, don't make that a thing. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's already a thing. Bit. It's already a thing happening all over the world right now. <laughs> um, the next thing kind of ties in, because it's more gaming, because if you didn't know, we love gaming. Uh, the Oculus Rift Crystal Cove yes. prototype um, was demonstrated there. I guess the first one had several problems, motion blurring, uh, resolution overall, and lack of head tracking. So now it's got um, like colored dots on there and a camera that monitors that keeps track of where it is yep. to uh, that it in part, helps at least fix some of those problems and there's other problems that were resolved. Another, like, exciting jump in gaming. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that, I don't remember the name of that platform that we reviewed at the same time. Oh, from the, last year? Yeah. There's a platform, I wish I had the name of it, I don't know, um, that, like, well, you wear special shoes and basically, no matter which way you walk, it moves under you. So you combine those two and you can really get an immersive gaming experience. Although for all you couch potatoes, it's going to suck because you have to stand up and move around. Uh, nope, I don't know. Omni? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Omni Gaming Treadmill. Yep, there that's the one. I Thank should you. not be allowed to buy that. Thank you, Google. Still World of Warcraft. Uh, the, the Oculus, yeah. So the original one, it would track like your head up and down, left and right. Um, you know, it, then that was, that was pretty much it. You know, you could turn your head like this. But what it didn't track is like if you leaned out. So if you're playing a first-person shooter, it would be natural to try to lean out and look around corners and things. Um, but it, it, it doesn't do that. Uh, and so this this new one should be able. It's supposed to be able to do that kind of stuff. And yeah. So 
and, and still prototypes. Um, also, along the lines of gaming, uh, PlayStation um, unveiled or demonstrated their PlayStation Now, which is actually game streaming. Mm -hmm. um, and that streams through a Twitch, I believe. Is that what it is? Yeah, because they were talking about, I've been doing a little bit more research into Twitch recently. We had streamed, for those of you who had caught it, um, during the, uh, after the I Drink, You Drink, we had streamed some video game gaming of us and me falling asleep uh, yes. at the end, if you caught it. Uh, it's not, the, I don't think it's there anymore, so, and I certainly but didn't download it and keep it. it. It's the reverse, though. It's not streaming it out, it's streaming it in. Hmm. So, okay. like, to be able to play, like, older PlayStation games. Oh, then that's something different. Right. Okay. Uh, they bought a cloud gaming service, I don't know how you pronounce it, G-A-I-K-A-I, -A -I, in 2012, and I guess they're uh, presuming that's the foundation of it. So streaming old PlayStation games, is that the that's idea behind it? Options, yeah. Okay. But interesting, very interesting. Especially because none of us have a PlayStation. Uh, they also the Pebble Steel smartwatch. It's the first smartwatch I have seen that actually just looks like a watch. Doesn't look like some big honking like. Basically, it doesn't look like this for those that are watching the video. Okay. It looks like a watch. And for those who aren't watching the video, he took his phone and put it on his wrist. That's basically because that's what they look like. Yeah, that's a lot. Some of them do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they, they just look odd, but just yeah. you know, I mean, for multiple reasons, that's a good thing. Number one, it's not something obvious that someone's going to want to steal because those things are not cheap. And number two, it's just it's slimmer. It's you know, it just, does it connect with your phone? Is that what? Yeah, because it, so, it's okay. watch. Yeah. So I don't know how I feel. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't. Know how I feel about the idea of a smartwatch. Like I feel like it's, I don't know how much. Sequoia only wants stupid watches. No, but I don't know how much functionality that you would, like, how much more functionality you would get out of it over like your phone. Like, I think I think that the idea is that you can keep your phone in your pocket, um, and it's just like you you might use it to read email, you could use it to make phone calls. Um, you know those types of things. Definitely check text messages. And a lot of them, uh, because smartwatches and uh, a lot of that uh, that type of stuff was big at CES. Like everybody had a smartwatch. Yeah. Everybody had um, watches that synced up with uh, um, lots of workout stuff. Like some right. of them like keep track of uh, your sleeping habits and things like that. So, but so it's more of like a supplement to your phone as opposed to a replacement because I I was thinking it was supposed to be like a, a lot of those were there were however some people that did some groups that did release phones that were a replacement like they were not your phone and those ones were bigger they were significantly those are bigger. the ones that are the phone um, on your one wrist one of them in particular like you could actually pop off your wrist it had a camera on it you could take pictures with it it had another hookup for that you could attach to like a helmet for action cams and things like that. So, which is another big market that's that was highly featured at CES was mm -hmm. action cams. Um, and uh, for those who don't know what action cams are, it's basically you put a camera on your bike or your motorcycle or your helmet, and, and it records what you're seeing for all intents and purposes. Yes. Um, the last kind of major thing that I saw that really drew my attention um, is the, I don't know how to pronounce it, N-U-V-Y-Y-O-S, Tableau, T-A-B-L-O. It's a dual-tuner DVR um, that makes pushing over-the-air TV to all your mobile devices e easy. Um, it's basically, you know, you're plugging it in more to, um, to get access to all that stuff throughout your household or all your mobile devices, even, it says. Um, but I just think a neat, I mean, and I have a lot of, I can do this stuff with stuff that I've kind of hacked together. Uh, but to just be able to buy it and someone be able to do this kind of out of the box is kind of amazing. So it, do you, is it uh, like a hard drive or it's like a, it's just a wireless? Because, I mean, any DVR is going to have to have a hard drive. Oh, okay. But okay. It so is, it's, it's, it's its own okay. DVR. Is it supposed to also hook up with, like, your cable and yes, to stuff like that? Yeah. Okay. So basically the idea is you can record your show, like The Walking Dead, which if you're watching this right now, it comes out this so it comes back out on Sunday, and if it's if you're watching it when we release it, then hopefully you have to see it. You've already seen no spoilers. It. Don't talk to us on the podcast about what happened. <laughs> yeah, in stop. The future, your past. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you could record something, and then you'd watch it on your tablet, or instead of or, having to, yeah, right, yeah. So those are the ones that uh, really jumped out to me. Very cool. What about you? Um, I actually, I had saved an article that was, um, I did a couple of them, but I think the one I'm going to 
talk about was the um, the weirdest gadgets that came out of CES. Okay. Um, so it's not exactly like the ones that we're excited about, but um, so there was this one right here, which was sort of going off the 3D printer thing, like the 3D doodle. Instead of it being plastic, it's sugar, so you can make like sugar sculptures. So it's called the Chef Jet 3D printer, and uh, it's going to have different flavors like chocolate, vanilla, watermelon, and um, it's expected to cost uh, around five thousand dollars. That's so. So a that's lot of like pre-made candy you can buy for five thousand yeah, dollars. But that's, that's, if if you think about like the cake decorating industry and like stuff like that, like that that's revolutionary because right now those people are like sculpting like flowers out of sugar and then being like, don't touch it. <laughs> so it's actually it's like, oh, it's broke. Here, here's another one. Exactly. I, pre I prefabbed like four hundred just in case. Which some of them do for like the really high end cakes and stuff like that. Yeah. They have to make like whole like rooms full of like sugar flowers. Yeah, I bet it won't. It reduce the cost of those cakes though. <laughs> So you got to pay for that five thousand oh, dollars sugar yeah. sugar cube maker. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's it was not exactly what you first think of when you think about like. It's not a consumer like end. So, no, it is it's not. It's not like, hey, come over for tea and see my little shaped people that we're gonna put <laughs> on the tea. Look, I made it look like you. <laughs> yeah. Um. So then, uh, apparently, um, I'm not sure who released it, but somebody made yes. a uh, six foot tall stereo system. Well, speaker. <laughs> Shaped like a Dalek. Yeah. It had 32 woofers on the skirt, and it had uh, it was equipped with 5,000 watt amplifiers, and it's called the Dalek Massive. It is the loudest and largest Bluetooth speaker. It's cool. Like I, I like I am I'm a big Doctor Who fan, as anybody yeah. who watches or listens and or watches the show knows, and you're a big Doctor Who fan. I am. Um, it would be cool to have, but like you couldn't really own something like that. No, I mean by yourself. Honestly, like, I would never, ever spend money on something like that. Yeah. Like, I don't Does have... Does it say how much it costs? It did not say it's how much it... It's a one-of-a-kind. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, but even if that was something that was for sale, like, I think... Yeah. Just based on my design aesthetic, yeah. I would never buy it. And number two, it seems pretty... F but this is the weirdest stuff to come out of CES. That's sort of the point. The DeLorean was there from uh, uh, Back, Back to the Future. The, yes. the that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, another one was a personal personal thermal imaging device that you can put onto your phone um, so that you can see, like, the thermal imaging in the room. And it's, I think, intended for ghost busting. Oh. Yeah. It may not be intended for ghost busting, It'll but I think that's used, sort of, like, yeah. the marketing behind it. And um, for only 350 bucks. For the, something that you can just attach to your smartphone to get thermal imaging? I I don't know if it's consumer level, and what, I mean, I've never really looked into it. So you don't have to really want one, but it's neat, you know. It's kind of yeah, cool. and I can see for people who like, you know, already do ghost hunting as like a hobby. I could see how that could be considered or a pretty, career. Or a career. Some people do it as a career. I mean, you're looking like abashed, like that was a possible career choice for you at some point. That's what my was? Uh, high school counselor said was the only thing I was. I thought it was something that he already did. <laughs> I was going to say, was this like a past career that we don't know about? Because that's why you're like, that's, that's why it's totally reasonable for... <laughs> I pre-ordered one. <laughs> Three, in fact, just in case the first two break. Yeah. But, so, I mean, that's pretty cool. You know, I mean, it's not something... I mean, it's interesting. Uh, slouch Zapper. It's uh, something that would clip under a collar or a bra strap or something, and every time that you start to slouch, it zaps you to keep you standing up straight. Beats. Um, I have a lock and I put it on other people. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that wouldn't be good for at work. You'd have like way too much fun with that. A if you zapper. can lean, like you what? can clean. <laughs> Zap. A slouch zapper seems like like why? I mean, I understand that like you know good posture is important, but it, good posture isn't really as important. I mean, it still is because people I mean, perceive it. You know, like it's body language. Yes, but I get—I don't know. I, I guess I wouldn't imagine that you would need something like that's anywhere from sixty to eighty dollars to train yourself to sit up straight. If it's going to benefit you. Surprise! Surprised what people pay sixty to eighty that's bucks true. for. That's true. Um, you ever seen those uh, weight loss pills in stores? That's Forty or fifty true. bucks, and they don't do anything really. At least they're not approved by the FDA. Well, I mean, I guess you can find Fenfen maybe, but I don't know how safe that would be. Um, so then the last one is, it's called Mom. Or I guess, well, not, I have one of those. maybe not the last, because they do have other ones. Um, so one of them is, it's, 
I basically you put it on like your counter, and then you put these like other little like they call them cookies, but other little like I get I think they're like data collectors basically, and it basically they're accelerometers. What was that? They're accelerometers. Accelerometers. So it shows if the thing moves. Okay. Yeah. Um. But it it's all about like uh helping you track your eating and your you know everything that's going on in the house where the keys are you know did you know Joey go to the computer and get it or go to the refrigerator and get a third lunchable like all that sort of stuff I think it's supposed to be like mom while you're away is sort of the impression I got yeah. from the article um, which is like pretty cool but also a little like wow yeah well, like, yeah it, it's more because I considered this one myself it's more about like um. Why haven't you taken your vitamins yet? You haven't brushed your teeth. Um, why do, haven't you drank any water today? Like, it'll nag you about doing things. Right. That you want to do. Yeah. Okay. Oh, because okay. the accelerometer's on there, so, like, my practicing guitar, I'd be like, you haven't practiced guitar in three days, you know? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Right, exactly. And that's more right. what it's about. Okay, know? I understand now. Okay. That'd be great. Could put one on the bottom of my coffee cup. Be like, why haven't you drank coffee today? <laughs> well, that or uh, I could see that as actually being used in... Um, People who want uh, in, who want to live independently, who uh, maybe yeah. like might forget to take medication on a daily basis or something like that. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, but you do, you know, you don't because what happens is you you a lot of times when people go and and end up living in uh, living facilities that where they give you a lot more care, um, your health tends to degrade uh, quicker than if you can live independently. So I could see something like that. Hey, you forgot to take your vitamins, like you said today. Right, right. Or you know. You forgot to take your antipsychotic medication. You're going to start hearing voices. Please put down the knife. <laughs> Stop stabbing me. Well, I know I said something about like you know keeping track of like keys, like anything that can help me keep track of anything in my apartment is awesome because I was like remember like the old like uh, your landlines how they had like the button that you could press to find the yes the, the cordless. Yeah. Yep. I wish that I had that on everything. Because I can never find anything. But then you hit the button, and then it just made massive noise. Well, I mean, like, like on my phone. Like, I wish everything, <laughs> everything. in my life has something, and then I can everything be like, "Where are my keys?" One button. <laughs> everything starts yeah. beeping. <laughs> <laughs> Where's everything? <laughs> my window shatter. Well, pretty soon, when you have uh, like Google Glass for everything, then you can just yeah. you can tag stuff with with your uh, what's it called? Few things. Something life. Animated. Uh, don't talk to me. That was that very, went. yeah. Um, so, and then another one that I had on here was um, the snore silencing bed. Um, because I, th I okay. think, well, the entire idea about it is a sleep number, but it sort of like changes as you sleep to give you like the perfect night's rest. So, like, you know, I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm like, sometimes I want softer, sometimes I want firmer, which. I mean, I have, like, a crappy spring mattress, but... So it changes based on, like, your needs and how you're sleeping. Okay. To, like, get you back into sleep or, you know, to keep you keep you sleeping, that sort of thing. It's $8,000, which is really not that expensive if you think about something that does all that for you. Yeah, I mean... For a high-end bed, it's within the realm. Yeah, because yeah, I would yeah. say, like, I mean, I think, like, even just regular Tempur-Pedics are pretty up there, too. They're expensive, you know? and then any of the... Uh, the yeah, those beds that will adjust for yeah the sleep number. Yeah. That's like I think four thousand dollars. Yeah. Just for the. The sleep number. No, just oh. for the bed that, that adjusts. Yeah, that, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Adjustable yeah. Adjustable bed frames or whatever they are. Yeah. So. Um, and this one says uh, debit, credit, or hand vein scanner payment. That looks cool. Yeah, <laughs> so it's. I can't actually see many places using it that much, but uh, a lot of places can't even get like Google Wallet and. Uh, the uh, um, little uh, sensors in credit cards to work like, yeah. half the time. So, but, I mean, um, I can't see that being, like, used in most places. But well, this is sort cool. of, like, you know, very, like, you know, the beginnings of this type of technology. Yep. But I actually read a lot about how, um, in the different articles I was reading, about how they're sort of, like, going with this uh, technology of it scanning your hand veins because it's, like more, like, more secure than your fingerprint. So, you know, it's... And it can be scanned more easily. It probably has sort of a lot to do with your hand veins uh, aren't specifically like in a specific area based on your genetics or anything. Whereas like fingerprint is like fingerprint is like two uh, twins have the same fingerprint, but hand veins probably have more to do with as you're developing. Yeah. Um, they develop in different ways, and so even in twins, they're varied. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a medical person. 
Yeah, but that is something that they're definitely moving towards as far as, like, you know, identification and using things based, like, you know, unlocking your car will probably eventually be by your hand vein and unlocking your phone. I know your phone unlocks on your face. Yes. So. <laughs> um, Wake up, James. I am awake. Yeah, so those are the ones that sort of popped out on me. I didn't really... Oh, I saw, oh, I saw the, that one. I thought that one was great. The remote for your pet? No. Oh, which no. one? The the uh, iPhone uh, taser. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they have this... this It fits around your uh, the iPhone. They're going to have some coming out for the Galaxy as well. Um, but it's a taser uh, as well as a uh, uh, an extendable ba- an extended battery for your phone as well. Um, but that was a, actually the extended batteries. That was another big thing that was oh, yeah. at CES. Lots of extended mm-hmm. batteries. There was one that I'm not a big like extended battery person. Like for me, my phone gets a decent amount of battery, and I've got plugs everywhere. So yeah. if I need to charge, I've got it in my house. I've got one at work. I've got like 18 in my, you know, in my car probably. Uh, but uh, the uh, they had one that um, not only had you know something like twenty thousand milliamps or something it was something huge but it'll also you could plug in a little adapter and jump start cars wow. yeah yeah so and, and they said that uh, four to six cylinder cars it could jump start on one full charge probably something like ten to fifteen cars wow uh, and then eight cylinder they said like five to six. But they're coming out with a bigger one that they said will jumpstart a big rig. So wow, yeah, that's impressive. Um, the only other one I wanted to mention was the uh, remote control for your pet or for your dog, more specifically. It was talking about how, like, you know, like when you're training your dog, you know, sit and they sit. You congratulate them. The whole idea is that you put this control on there and then you give each verbal um, command a uh, set like motion that happens in the collar. So that instead of being like, you know, yelling across the room, come here, you just press the button and that associated motion happens so that then they come without. Very Pavlovian. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's a little like, I don't know, like when I was reading, I was kind of like, I feel like that's like cheating somehow or like a little, it, a little it creepy. It is, but the problem is what happens when your pet slips out of the collar and runs out your front door. Yeah. Train your dogs right yeah. Sorry been, to the people that made this. I apologize. But when the dog slips out of the collar and now won't come because he never trained to come when he was called, could get hit by something or yeah. away or something. I mean, it's a little like, I just sort of feel like, I don't know. Like, the it's idea a that you, can, you can control your dog from your iPad. Like, that's a little. I mean, I know that you're not actually controlling him. I know that right. it's just like normal training stuff, but that's a little like moving a little into like, I don't, I don't know. It makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it it's possible to train your dog without a fancy. It's it's kind anymore. of the way that how some video games like reward you for playing every single day, uh, in order to keep you coming back, or you know give you more and more things to find and craft in order to keep you coming back and playing over and over and over and over. You keep looking at her. I'm looking at both of you. I, I'm I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh sweet, I got a rare new recipe. I'm pretty sure you said that like an hour ago. <laughs> We were podcasting. Okay, two time. hours ago. I, I did not. I was not playing while we were podcasting. Two hours. Because they won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't streaming from my computer. It'd probably be. <laughs> On WoW. All right. That's all I had for that. I uh, I have other things that aren't specifically CES related, but uh, I got to jump through some hoops here. You do that. You jump through hoops. He's going to log on to Diablo. I oh, jeez. Not, not that. <laughs> I'm out. Doing okay there? I'm, do, I'm doing my best. Here. Sorry. Here we go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Go. Oh, my goodness. Why is it so wonky? Wow. All right. So there we go. Uh, StravaMax.com. Um, that was a great transition. So anyway, uh, so we have StravaMax.com is, uh, is a website uh, uh, where... Uh, Scroll down. Okay. It's a website where they sell jewelry. The young lady that uh, made all of our graphics makes the jewelry for uh, them. And uh, really nice stuff. Take a look at it. They always have something that's on sale. Uh, buy some, you know, if you see something that you like, maybe uh, pick it up. But, yeah, StravaMax, S-T-R-A-V-A-M-A-X.com. So there you go. 
Ding. Now let me turn this off. I don't want you to see my face from this angle. <laughs> it's not my best angle. <laughs> so, there you go. All right. So uh, I have, um, uh, if, uh, if there's anything out there, any other uh, CES stuff that uh, the rest of you thought was like really cool or something, uh, mm -hmm. let us know about it. Uh, send us an email. Uh, contact at ithinkyouthink.com. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I thought it was pretty cool. I I'd love to be able to go someday. Um, there's a lot of conventions and yeah. shows True. that um, I'd like to be able to go to in the future. Um, so, yes, uh, there we are. Uh, I have... So, talking about some of the technology that they've got coming out, um, there was one of the things that I saw that they did talk about is they do have these 4, 4K and 5K TVs. They, they talked about the 5K, 4K TVs last year. Um, and then this year, the biggest new thing is curved TVs, yeah. which is pretty cool. I don't know specifically what's... I, I think it's supposed to give you a more immersive sort of yeah, experience. Yeah. Um, I think it could be really cool for, uh, like, uh, computer monitors. You know, yeah. if you had, like, a, you know, a, a, a relatively wide monitor... Um, for something like Skyrim that's curved around you slightly, um, it could really give you that sort of sense for like any kind of a simulation game, anything like that would really be cool. I'm not really in the market for a four or five thousand um, uh, pixel yeah. TV. Yeah. I mean, that is a lot. Right. Um, I think it's also a little less realistic for like families because there's a lot of like turning the TVs and like everybody being able to see it and if you're like sort of limiting to first so yeah for, I mean yeah. a lot of these like the like the OLEDs especially are TVs that really consumers aren't you know unless you are right. very well off and you always buy the the best top electronic you're probably not going to be purchasing these right. however one of the really nice things uh, that uh, has a two thousand dollar price tag which seems like a lot but it's actually really uh, reasonable is they have a 4K um, camcorder for two grand, 19.99. I mean, it's that's that is a great consumer level, um, consumer pro sort of level mm -hmm. camcorder that records in amazing quality. I mean, that's better than HD. Right. Um, that's better than the 1080. And uh, that was one of the things that I thought was pretty cool. Um, a while ago, I'd come across this other article in which they're talking about how uh, Eye reflections um, that uh, uh, in upcoming in that they might be able to in the future uh, be able to figure out from photographs uh, who is the person who actually took the picture by the eye reflections uh, of the people it took a picture of because of the advanced resolution of the pictures that exactly taken. exactly yeah. so they they actually did a proof of concept. Uh, where they took a picture. I mean, they took it with, uh, let's see if I can find this right away, but it was a uh, very high megapixel. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, it doesn't, I, I, don't, I don't see it right away, but it was, okay, 39 megapixel camera. So to kind of put it in perspective, like my cell phone has an 8 megapixel camera. Nice, uh, you know, high end, higher end um, professional cameras. Um, Tend to tend to be in that uh, you know 20, 25, 30 megapixel range. Yeah. Um, it's it's not very common, you know. It, and they had really good lighting conditions. They had specifics, you know, kind of going on. Um, but uh, the idea is that technology is continuing to advance. Eventually, we're probably going to have 39 megapixel cameras in our in our phones. Right. And so then you have a situation where some you know uh, uh, guy takes a picture. Of something, um, and it's not something good, or it's something that's bad. But they uh, uh, they can actually then zoom in on this picture and get the reflection off of the eye and see who actually took the picture, who else was there in the background behind the person who was taking the picture. So I thought that, that was pretty cool. Um, it's very uh, I don't know if you guys watch a lot of classic like uh, Brit comedies, but there was uh, Red Dwarf. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with the name, but I've never watched it. Okay, in like the final episode of The Red Dwarf, there was this... Spoiler really, alert. Yeah, final episode. It's not a real big spoiler. But anyway, there was this really silly part where they were... they were There was a picture that was taken, and they like zoomed in on a picture, and they zoomed in on the reflection off of that picture, and then zoomed in on off of another reflection in order to find out something. 
way off top, even like traveling down this like <laughs> off in the grass, dancing around. Way off topic. Moving on. Too much coffee. Do you have an article? I had two articles. Whoa. I had to use them. Leave it. Oh. I two articles. I thought you meant like you because you had something else, so I was like, wow, is he like prepared with another one? No, I was just looking through some other stuff. Okay. <laughs> like right. CES related. Well, I have one that's not CES related, but I thought it was really cool. And it was 23 things that you probably didn't know about the plant kingdom. Very hippie. And it is off of BuzzFeed. Um, but a couple of the ones, like, really stood out to me that I thought were kind of... Um, first of all, like, little things I didn't know, like, herb is from the leaf and the spice is from, like, the seed or the stem or the bark. Like, I didn't know that that's... I guess I didn't ever really think about I it. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, like, it makes sense now that I see that, you know, like, but I didn't really think about it. I thought this was cool. Plants are capable of recognizing their siblings. And so, like, they will compete less for available sunlight than a plant next to them that's, like, not part of their family. That's, this guy's super hippie. Uh, well, I was actually I was actually thinking that <laughs> that seems... Bro, need a little more root room? That, right. that actually seems like uh, that uh, the scientists might not be actually saying that, but they might say that those who uh, share the same genetic tend to not do that, but not necessarily that they recognize... That right, it's not like, like it's like, hey, Brosif. Yeah, like, yeah, like, like it's more how would they like, even determine that plants actually recognize? They might be able right. to determine that they compete less. But. Right. Um, then there was one saying that uh, one-third of the plant life on the island of Socotra near Yemen can't be found anywhere else on Earth. And so, like, whenever you see those, like, photos of, like, the really strange-looking things out, like, plants out in the desert, it's probably from there. See, those, but that tree kind of looks like a baobab. That one? No, this one here looks a little bit like a baobab tree, which are in Africa, um, which yeah. Yemen is relative. I mean, yeah. depending on where you're talking about in Africa, but in the Serengeti, um, the baobab is like that upside down one, really, yeah. really thick trunk and like tiny little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this one actually made me think of you when I read it. Uh, scientists are able to revive a flowering plant from the fossilized fruit found in the stomach of an Arctic ground squirrel. Nice. Just chapter nice. Two thousand years ago. That's pretty cool. So that's from th that plant. Was flowering 32, like that species, 32,000 yeah. years ago. That's pretty incredible. It is really If you think cool. about it, like, that we were able to bring that back. Could be the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. It could be. Either that or, you know, Jurassic Park, maybe. You know, no. we don't know. Um, no. I like this one that there is a, a garden dedicated to plants that kill all poisonous like plants. Everybody stay out of this garden. Well, I think it's like, I think it's like a walkabout and then they've got it all guarded off like, or whatever. But it. yeah, I think it's all poisonous plants. Or, you know, like, plants that'll, like, sting you and stuff like yeah. that. Like, all that kind of stuff, so. Um, caffeine was evolved as a natural insecticide. It, it's still so, recommended sometimes. Yeah. Um, so the other ones that uh, jumped out were the, the smell of freshly cut grass is actually a plant dis distress call. That's really creepy, then, because a lot of people, like, really like that smell. And that's, yeah. that's almost like, oh, I man. love the smell of panic plant life. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Should that really, be your tagline? Really sort of creepy. On I think you think for a while. Nope. I like the smell of really like the <laughs> distressed plant grass. grass. <laughs> um, some plants uh, will send out, uh, if they're being eaten by caterpillars, they'll send out chemical signals to like wasps around the area. That's Which is something yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that seems, and that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because like animals do that too. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if you guys have this kind of ant here, but I know in California once we had we had these. Um, ants. You guys, like, she's not. She doesn't live around here. Like, I I come in from California. I don't know okay. if you all have this. I don't know if we have them here. We have because in California we had ants that like when you smashed them they it smelled like really strong. Well, there's stink bugs, but this was an ant. It was an ant. And all the other ants would like come out if you snatched one of them. Like they're itty, like the little itty bitty black ones. So like one time we had like a bunch of them on a table. My my dad started like smashing the phone. All of a sudden there was like ants everywhere, and he was like, "Oh my god!" Like, and it like stunk to high heaven. Like it was like a bad smell. You did not like it. Wow. So that was interesting. Okay. Uh, so I mean, that's Look sort that of like, up. Send us an email on it. Um, and I've actually read about this before. Um, Johnny Appleseed uh, planted. Apple trees because they were making them for uh, hard cider. It wasn't because, you know. No, I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually like, yeah. It, it, if you actually look up the actual story about Johnny Appleseed, it's very 
strange. It's probably a hippie thing. I know that something about him wanting to plant a lot of apples. I, I actually read an entire book on the history of, it was the history of apples, tulips, potatoes, and marijuana. I can believe it. That's super hippie, I know. But Dandelion. Dandelion, yes. Because um, you don't have to react. Okay, I'm dandelion. Sorry. Uh, figs are not always considered vegan because um, they're when, sometimes when they're planted by the fig wasp, they'll get like stuck, and then the corpse is digested by the fig. So awesome. Are sometimes so no more figs for yes. for, uh, for people. Who I don't. Yeah, I don't vegan. know anybody that's actually vegan. vegan. People who eat vegans. Um, and the oldest tree in the world is named Methuselah, and the tallest tree is named Hyperion, and Hyperion is in California. Actually, both of them are in California. I would I, I would imagine. And only a handful of scientists know the exact location. Yes, yes. Um, that makes sense. Mostly because, and they bring up it, this up, is in 2012, the fifth oldest tree, the senator, was burned down by apparently a meth addict. So... I can understand why. I would imagine that the tallest tree would be not that hard to find. Well, it depends on how much taller it is in the other trees, though. Yeah. That's true. Because you know. I think, I want to say that I thought that General Sherman was the tallest for a while, but I don't know if maybe he was unseated or he's, I know he's a very tall tree. I assume it's a redwood? The General Sherman? Yeah. It's a sequoia tree specifically, right, actually, right, which yeah. is why I know about it. <laughs> Narcissism. A little bit, yeah. I mean, we all are. It's okay. The one that you gave me is going to be the tallest tree in the world. I oh, right that's it. Have you ever started growing it? I have not, because I'm waiting until it's summertime so I can open my windows and Fair stuff, enough. so I don't, you know, kill it. <laughs> well, I can't wait till summer comes so we can stop having this conversation. If you're <laughs> I forget things, okay? Who are you again? We need name tags. We do. We used to have them on the bottom, and then somebody's the, the blue thing broke. It came back. <laughs> now we don't oh, use it anymore. It's on her computer. That's what you keep saying. That's what you keep saying. I don't know if that's true. And the other reason is because, um, as far as the scientists only knowing where it's at, is because the most isolated tree was hit and destroyed by a drunk driver in 1973. So there's nothing around for them to hit. Nothing around. For the, 250 miles yes. in any other dire in every direction. Yes. And it got hit by a drunk driver. Don't you just kind of want to find that guy and punch him in the face? Right? Like, seriously. This tree is out there. Well, maybe he thought to himself, it's lonely. I'll put it out of its misery. I'm going to get hammered. I'm, I'm guessing he wasn't intending to hit the world's most isolated tree. <laughs> I can just see this guy driving down the He's hammered out of his mind. He's going, oh, my God, there's a tree. i got to make sure not to hit it. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably like, oh, this is going to be a totally safe place for me to, like, drive around junk. <laughs> I bet I'm really good at this. Hit the world's most isolated tree. So Where, did it say where it was? It was no. It, it doesn't. Does uh, it said it was named. I I can't pronounce that because it's in French. But oh well, it's France. Probably. So if it's French, no, that's not necessarily um, true. But yeah, so I actually thought that was a really interesting article. Like yeah. you know, there aren't many. Like I mean, you know, it's hard to get people excited about plants, but I thought it was pretty cool. I don't think James is very. It was interesting. <laughs> James, is, James, is, James used up all of his energy on the last podcast. If I you missed tell. it, go back and check it out. Unbelievable. Click a button. Uh, creepy voices. Yeah, they're not creepy voices. They're just my voice, and you're now making me feel bad. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, piggybacking off of what you said in terms of the plants and everything, uh, this is... Um, it's a WordPress. Uh, I, I got this article from a, a WordPress, uh, WordPress, different blogs and things. Um, but uh, there was a major biological discovery uh, inside of the Chernobyl reactor. So those who are not familiar with what Chernobyl is, uh, well, you know, good. You know, I'm, I'm uh, pretty soon you'll probably be graduating from high school. So you know, you're probably too young, maybe to necessarily to realize, and maybe too young for the. I think there was a Tom Clancy Rainbow Six um, game or Call of Duty in which, like, you walk through Chernobyl. But anyway, um, they they found uh, this fun fungi uh, that uh, this like black fungi that was it, it was living in the Chernobyl reactor. And Chernobyl was this nuclear reactor uh, in Russia that had a meltdown. Uh, 
and basically turned this quaint little town with, I mean, the huge, relatively sprawling town. I mean, they even had an uh, amusement park and everything um, into a ghost town. Like, there's nobody, and they could live there for probably the next 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a while, because basically this, um, it was back before a lot of the safeguards that are in place now for nuclear reactors. Um, but, uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, lots of bad things. But So there is a uh, crap load of radiation that still pours out of this uh, this reactor, and so they're actually surprised that uh, anything is living in there. Mm -hmm. um, so they send in a little robot to collect some of the fungus to kind of examine it. How did they find out there was something living in there? Did they send in a little robot? They, they, they do. Like, they, they, yeah, they out? do. They do send. Um, I don't know if they send like people in. I would imagine not. They send. I, I think you can be in there for if you're wearing a suit. There is a certain amount of time that, that you people can be, can be yeah. there, so they can send scientists and everything in there for a little short stint. I don't know how close to the reactor. Mm -hmm. They could have seen yeah. it from a distance, you know. But I do know. know that they still monitor it because it, it is still, I mean, it's not a living, like, using reactor or anything, but it's still, I mean, they do monitor it. They do need to keep track of it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it there's still, obviously, uranium that's there. Uh, it's it's much like the, uh, the, the uh, um, nuclear reactor uh, in uh, Japan from a couple of years ago that had uh, had problems after the tsunami. Tsunami or earthquake? There's an earthquake. Now I feel embarrassed. Wait, wait, what? Remember. In What's Japan, there? where that reactor had oh, gotten messed um, up. Um, and I, was, I can't was remember the name of it. Was it a tsunami or? It was, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was the earthquake, and then the earthquake destroyed the nuclear reactor, and then that caused, um, well, because I was living in Hawaii at the time, and okay. we were on alert for a tsunami coming to Hawaii after the earthquake. Okay. So, because. Earthquakes beget tsunamis. Especially if they're in the ocean. Yeah. Right. Like when Haiti, when they had their big earthquake, we were also on alert for a tsunami for a warning tsunami. Okay. because just the way it yeah. changed everything. But. Um, but yeah, so I mean, they're still they're, obviously they're still monitoring that mm -hmm. reactor. I mean, that's the that's the drawback on it. Nuclear energy is sort of dangerous. So yeah, that was one of the things I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, life is prolific. I mean, it yeah. it really wants to live. Um, it's kind of one of those really interesting things that there's most likely life elsewhere in the universe. Uh, it's probably not, uh, you know, conscious life like we are, um, but it's probably, I would imagine that at least in our galaxy, it's all over the place. Uh, um, you have go. you ever heard of the elephant? I'm trying to find, like, a good... Here we go. Um, the elephant's foot of um, Chernobyl trying to find, there was a picture of it. So it's like, um, it's a buildup of corium, but it's so radioactive that if you got close enough to look at it, it would probably kill you. So it's sometimes nicknamed Medusa. Oh, okay. Have you heard of this? So it's just like this buildup of like nuclear material, and if there, it's said that if, yeah, if you looked at it in person, you would be dead. So they, they've nicknamed it Medusa, and that's also inside of Chernobyl. So it's really interesting that you have something like this. Yeah. In the same place that we now have life growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, it's it's fungus. I mean, when you get down but, to it, it's very yeah. it's very no. basic. But but, but still, every place we've thought that nothing can grow, yeah. something grows. Yep. Yes. You know? yep. Volcanic vents under the sea. Yep. yep. Life, life, life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why you know the, we're always changing our concept of what 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 is a habitable place. I yeah. Mean, it's just the more the that's that's why they think things like uh, that on Titan. Uh, 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 Moon orbiting Jupiter, Jupiter that uh, they think that there there might be life there mm -hmm. type thing living under the under this vast ocean near yeah uh, that's uh, so I've got another article if you want to hit it real quick so this I was know the answer to this one yeah um, <laughs> did you know why your fingers wrinkle underwater I, I actually don't. Okay. What do you think it is? I believe that if I remember correctly, it's an ev evolutionary thing because it's hard to grab things, and it makes it easier to hold on to things while in water. Yep. Uh, you know, for a long time, they, they thought that, uh, and this is still, I mean, it's still, to a certain, uh, they've done studies, and they find that it's easier to hold things when your hands are, you know, so wrinkled. It's, it's presumed to be true. Yes, yes. There's um, no way to really prove it, I guess. Right. There's no, not specifically, um, unless I guess you get the ear of God and have to talk to you, <laughs> too. But anyway, uh, yeah, so it's presumed that because they've done these studies that when your hands are wrinkled, it's easier to grasp wet objects. 
um, it I, it tends to actually uh, lend itself more towards the uh, the aquatic ape theory of mm -hmm. evolutionary um, uh, human evolution, which is a really sort of backwoods like nobody really. There are some scientists who support the aquatic ape theory, but yeah. um, it's not a mainstream theory. It's you know as to why we started walking upright, why we are the only uh, primate that has adipose fat on us, and things like that. Um, Which just makes me think about Doctor Who. I'm sorry. I know. I, whenever I think of adipose, I always think because that was the first place I ever heard it was on Doctor Who. Yeah. Little adipose creatures. I, I love adipose. Really? My wife thinks they're creepy. I think they're awesome. And actually, it's really funny because, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of a... <laughs> James is like... Whatever. I don't care. It's cool. Adipos are awesome. But I remember, I like, once there was, like, this thing on Tumblr that was, like, who runs the Doctor Who Tumblr? And they posted, like, a gif of adipose. And it was, like, this ongoing joke with their Tumblr. They're always, like, the adipose are at it again! And they yeah. show little gifs of adipose because they're awesome. So when your fingers wrinkle, I mean, there is a specific uh, uh, chemistry that's taking place. Um, but they believe that it's an ad, it's an evolutionary advantage to make it easier to grip objects that are wet, um, which makes sense. I mean, treads on cars. It, that's that's the entire reason there's tread on your car. You know, the different channels on your cars, treads on your tires is to provide grip in wet and icy circumstances. So there you go. Yeah, pretty cool. Any other articles? I got nothing. Any other special CES stuff that you wanted to? Well, I know they did. I haven't dug into the article, but uh, they were talking. I guess there's a whole thing about a fully integrated smart home is coming, mm -hmm. and we see it more and more with different stuff that ties into smartphones and whatnot. So that'd be really neat. I would love to see that. that and that's where like the, where the mom thing is headed too. It's well, I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had talked. Many pieces. You had talked about the. Uh, the the um, DVR where you can stream you know basically not stream everything but you can access it all from your different devices. I remember last year when we were talking about CES and tech we'd like to see and like fantastical stuff. Uh, we talked about like having your smartphone that you'd come in and you'd maybe drop it in like a little box and then that smartphone would also be your home computer that would just access that smartphone. You know. Uh, it would charge your phone while it was in there. All of your stuff at home, like your your uh, your Refrigerator would keep track of what kind of items were in it, and then would suggest when you go out grocery shopping. Which, mm -hmm. you know, Google is getting pretty good where it's starting to predict the types of things like your routine, things, and um, you know where you're going, and sort of creepily, but at the same time, it's convenient, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, but it would say, oh, you know, you're running out of orange juice, and I know you just stopped here to pick up photos or whatever, but it's they've got orange juice on sale. Hey, you might want to grab some orange juice. Yeah. Type thing. So, um, I've got an article. I, I didn't want to go through it because um, it's really long, and uh, but it's it's it uh, it talks about different things based on like how fast we're discovering things that we will see over the next hundred years, mm -hmm. um, and it, and it kind of takes these two different paths: more of the dystopian future and more of a utopian future. So some of the stuff that you know um, that more lends itself towards a dystopia and more that lends itself towards a utopia. So it's it's really kind of interesting. So one's idiocracy and one's Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We all know which way we're going. People. Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the answer he was looking for. Uh, it's it's the answer I would like to happen, but it's not the answer I see when I turn on my television. <laughs> <laughs> I well, I'm a Star Trek socialist, so you should run for office under that heading. <laughs> yeah, I am a Star Trek socialist. And vote, vote me in, and I'll have teleporters within four years. So it'd be interesting. We should save that article. That could be a good one uh, for the next time we have science tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so don't uh, look it up. Yeah, don't try to find it. Be surprised. Put the Google down. <laughs> um, so we've got uh, uh, two more shows um, this month. Uh, yeah. After this one, we've got a political social. Uh, we've. Talked about it being about the. Uh, well, let's not say because if we change our mind, yeah, we it's gonna be about something anything. political and/or social. <laughs> yeah, and then or uh, video games. Or video games. It might be about a political social video game. There is one, Democracy Three, that I've really wanted to get. I don't have the money for it, so if there's anybody out there who wants to buy it for me, you don't have to do that. Actually, yeah. that's really e-begging. Yeah. 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 Buy it for James. <laughs> I won't play it, so you can just get me the expansion for Reaper of Souls. <laughs> or the expansion for Reaper of Souls. Or Diablo 3. 
whenever it comes out for the console. By the way, it. if you want to friend her on WoW or whatever you do on WoW, her username it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's play too much. Fourteen forty four. Fourteen forty four. Sorry. Anyway, we will see you next week. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you know what? Let's let's try this. I've never tried this. We're gonna try to do this. We're gonna try to send them out with the music from Alex and the Anders, which of course we didn't bring up at the beginning. Thank you, Alex and the Anders. Mm -hmm. Here we go. As soon as I do this, I'm working on it. Uh, any any moment now. You just. There we go. I hope it's working, or this is really awkward. It's true. I mean, it's kind of awkward anyway, but that's okay. What? <laughs> <laughs>